Hello, hello everyone and welcome back to episode two in the brand new garden. Now it's been a little while since the last video so I thought it was about time for an update and a bit of a tour and we're also going to be planting our potatoes today as well. Right, so let's get these potatoes in first. Um, it is Good Friday today, so it's a little bit of a tradition of ours to get the potatoes planted on Good Friday. Um, and it's quite lucky actually, because we just managed to get the bed finished a couple of days ago. And we dug that over, raked it, it's all ready to go. And the sun is shining, so it worked out perfectly. Um, so we are growing four rows of salad and seven rows of main crop. There's two varieties of salad, which are Rocket and Charlotte. And then there's three varieties of main crop, which are Cara, Maris Piper and King Edward. Um, one thing we have done this year, and um, we've actually done it before as well, is we've cut some of the potatoes in half, um, purely because there's so many potatoes going in that we just wanted to save a little bit of money. Um, and yeah, like I said, we've done it before. It's worked perfectly fine. You still get a really good crop from them. The one thing I will say is when you do cut them in half, make sure you have a nice shoot on each half. Um, I mean, it probably doesn't really matter. It depends if you're in the chitting group or you're not in the chitting group, but we always chit our potatoes. Um, and yeah, we like to have a nice, healthy, strong shoot on each piece um, when we put them in. So yeah, I think that's about that. Dad's putting them in now as we speak. Yep. So you're putting the salads in first. Starting with you? the salad ones, yeah, we've got four rows, haven't we, this yes. year? Um, the salad ones go in, well, they all go in six inches deep, or what's that in centimetres? 12. 12, 12 yeah, to 15. Yeah. Um, and they are 30 centimetres apart and the rows are 60 centimetres apart. Whereas the main crop, you give them a little bit more room because you'd like well, them bigger, bigger obviously. Yeah, bigger potatoes. The rows are 70 centimetres apart and the plants uh, or the potatoes will be 38 centimetres apart. Yeah. Just give them a little bit more, more room. Yeah. And we usually put them in the same time uh, because these are quicker to mature. And you don't need them so big again. No, nice so you little can salad them up ones. Earlier. If you can do these earlier, but you do run the risk of frost. Yes. So yeah. by the time these come up, hopefully the risk of frost won't be too too bad. Last frost date's usually in May, isn't it? So usually May. Uh, yeah. Not too sure. It used to be sort of middle of May where we used to live, but obviously yeah. we're a bit higher up now. So. <laughs> but I mean, we just earth them up, isn't it? There's the risk of just frost. Just earth them yeah. up. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Um, I'm using trail to put them in. You can dig a trench, but with a lot of potatoes to put in, very time consuming. Yes, it takes a lot of time. So um, you can use a trowel or a, a dibber. If you use a dibber, it has to be quite a big dibber. Yeah, we we used a trowel last year, I think. Yeah, and, and yeah. And I it mean, was, it was perfectly It was pretty good, wasn't it? Yeah, it's just it's a lot quicker. Doing it. Just obviously dig the hole down and uh, make I'm sure we put the, uh, the chits facing up. Um, doesn't make that much difference, but... Uh, no, they will find their way, I like they? to think it helps. <laughs> And that's yeah. that, isn't it? That's that, yeah. Yeah. That's all there is to it. Right, we better get cracking because that's yep. the first row going on. Yeah, around. I know. It's going to take a while, isn't it? It is, yeah. <laughs> right, I better start helping him.
right so let's get on with the tour it's actually been two weeks since we planted the potatoes out <laughs> but life has just been so manic um, it's been so so busy we've actually started the garden shows again so we were in Harrogate last weekend um, and we'll be at RHS Malvern Spring Show um, I think it's starts on the 11th of May for four days so yeah we'll be going there as well and then we've got a bit of a break and then it's Hampton Court and then Tatton in July um, but yeah life's just been manic which is probably why I haven't filmed a video in such a while as well and we've just been trying to set the business back up you know I mean the move was stressful enough trying to set the new workshop up and yeah just just work basically um, so there's been times when we've actually planted quite a bit and I've been like I should have filmed that um, and you know I just I just didn't have the time so so yeah we have been really busy in the garden as you can see <laughs> um, first thing I will say about is we put up some hedging and some fencing um, really because of the dogs we were going to put the hedging in anyway but we decided to put the fence around it as well because my parents got a new dog um, he's a one-year-old fox red labrador and he's bonkers like he would rip up all the hedging and just run around the garden like a loon also if he was in here he'd be everywhere <laughs> we wouldn't have anything growing so yeah we decided to fence it and then we put the hedging inside the idea really is to let the hedging sort of grow through the chicken wire fence yeah and just look natural it's just a bog standard privet hedge uh, we had the same one back at home in the front garden and it grew beautifully so yeah i think it's only going to grow you know to about this tall so we can still see over the top um but it's all the way around all the way around um, and around the polytunnel area as well just think it will you know it will just it will just look nice won't it so um yeah we put that in that took quite a long time we actually ordered this from our local garden center which is a really nice garden center i think we only ordered was it 40 to 60 centimeter plants but then we were told that they were out of stock but they were going to give us um, bigger plants for the same price so we actually got like i think they're between like 60 centimeters to like 120 centimeter plants <laughs> we were just going to sort of you know heal them in pull the spade back heal them in but we actually had to dig holes for each one because the root balls were quite big but anyway we did it and it, it looks amazing it's sprouting really nicely um so that's good it's growing quite quick um, and then the other main thing we've done is the four vegetable beds have been dug and completed um, and we've got the main pathways i'm not walking on this side because it's all had grass seed <laughs> laid down um, a week or so ago we actually had to just relay this because I just put some asparagus in um, so the only pathway which I can walk on is down the center and um, but yeah we've got the four main vegetable beds they are six meters by nine meters each so we've got the potato one over there which is what we planted up on Good Friday then we've got the root one there which has We've got carrots in there at the moment, parsnips and beetroot. They're all starting to show now. They're starting to germinate, which is good. We've also got the onions in there, which are Stuttgarter giant onions. There's four rows of them, um, but there'll also be like Swiss chard. Um, we were gonna put shallots in, but we <laughs> didn't buy any shallots. Um, I can't remember what else is going in there. I think there's gonna be a few rows of cut flowers as well. And then this bed is the lagoon bed. So we've got the broad beans coming up nicely over there. Actually, my dad grew them in modules, so he planted them out a few weeks ago now, but they're, they're looking really, really nice and sturdy and healthy. So they're the Aquadulsa Claudia variety. There's two rows of them. Then there's gonna be some runner beans, which he's gonna sow direct, probably in a couple of weeks time, maybe. Then there's gonna be some bolotis growing up these wigwams with some courgettes in the middle then there are, are three rows of double peas here these are early onward um, and they're about three inches tall at the moment and um, he direct sowed them i can't remember when it, over a month ago um, and then a couple of weeks ago he direct sowed 
some Hurst green shaft ones in here. So overall there's going to be six rows of, well double rows of peas. And then I've just planted some asparagus in the end here, which will obviously stay there every year. Um, there's 16 plants in there. I'm so excited for the asparagus. I love asparagus. Um, I think on my last allotment I just had one plant, <laughs> which was a bit pathetic. It didn't provide many spears, but yeah, 16 in there is going to provide a nice amount. So very excited for that. Um, and then the bed over there, the last bed is the brassica bed. So that will be all the cabbages, sprouts, um, broccoli, everything like that. I think the sweet corn is going to go in there as well. And also the butternut squash um, and some pumpkins too. And then on the end of the row here, in line with the asparagus, is the rhubarb. And I believe there's seven in there now. We found one <laughs> which we uh, divided into two which I'm just going to say is Victoria is the bog standard one we also found another one over in the orchard so I bought that up so we got three of those then we also bought two Timperley Earlies and we bought two Fulton Strawberry Surprise um, so yeah there's seven rhubarbs along there again they're all growing really really nice and it'd be nice to have those different varieties you know have be able to harvest them at different times of the year we won't force them this year um, and maybe not next year either we'll just let them establish uh, but yeah rhubarb <laughs> i've missed it so much um but yeah that's all the vegetable beds and that's pretty much all i can say about this area we are going to build a sort of metal pergola to go in the middle where it crosses over um, and the idea there is to have some climbing roses so we'll probably put a climbing rose in the corner of each bed to climb that pergola my dad's going to make the pergola because he makes all the metal work for the shop um, and again that probably won't be made until autumn when we're less busy when the shows have ended <laughs> and we can sort of wind down a little bit um, but yeah that's the main vegetable patch that's it um, but I will take you on to, I suppose, what I would call the main hub, but it's not quite the main hub of the allotment at the moment. So one day this will hopefully be the main hub of the kitchen garden because this is where the greenhouse and the potting shed will be going and we're going to have like a sort of a courtyard area. Um, so yeah, we'll be spending a lot of time here, but not at the moment, <laughs> because there's nothing here. Um, we're actually, well, we were hoping to get a greenhouse, but because we've been spending a lot of money on the garden and on the house and, and with the move and everything, um, we've decided to sort of put that on hold until we can save up a little bit more and get a greenhouse that we're really, really happy with. Um, so yeah the greenhouse is going to have to wait for a little bit longer <laughs> but i mean I, th I think it's going from about here to like here so it's going to be quite big and i mean i think it's going to come out this far i can't remember the size of greenhouse that we were after but but yeah it's going to be quite big and the idea is to maybe have a little bit sectioned off so we can treat it as like a little bit of a summer house and have nice seats in there and just sort of escape there you know when it's a little bit colder um and then obviously have the part for all the potting on and and the seed sowing and everything and then maybe have some cold frames outside <laughs> like i'm just dreaming here now <laughs> I, know, I know it will happen one day but not maybe not for a couple of years um, and then yeah there's going to be paved area all the way along we're going to have some raised beds so there's going to be i think two meter square raised beds um, in front of the greenhouse so one here and then a meter gap and then another one here i think that's right um, and they're going to be made out of oak sleepers which we know where we're going to get them from we just need to get them because <laughs> again we just haven't had the time to to go and get them and to sort of erect them and put them up i would have liked to have done it actually because we're going to have a slightly bigger one in front of that vegetable bed um, which i'm calling my cut flower bed and that one's going to be about two meters by five meters so it's going to be nearly the same length as that 
vegetable bed um, and I was hoping to put my dahlias and gladioli in there which I have and I need to plant the gladioli out actually but the dahlias um, I put it up they are growing beautifully the idea was to build the oak sleeper beds so I could put them in um, but yeah we just haven't had the time to build them so what I'm going to do is we're going to plant the gladioli in the herbaceous border I'll probably put the dahlias in there this year as well and then maybe in the autumn or in the winter when we've got a bit more time to build the raised beds then obviously we'll lift the dahlias and we can put them into their new home at the end well at the end of the year or next year so um yeah <laughs> no raised beds no greenhouse yet no putting shed um and that's going to go over in this corner i don't know if you'll be able to see me but that's basically going to go here i think it's going to be about 16 foot by 8 foot but yeah it's going to go in this corner here and then you well the idea is that you're going to come out of the potting shed and then there'll be a door in this end of the greenhouse so you can go in so if it's raining you know you can just run from one to the other again all paved all paved around here i might keep this container sort of in between the greenhouse and the potting shed and fill it with flowers or something maybe have a little seating area um yeah i like i'm so desperate for a potting shed <laughs> so so desperate um I, part of me thinks I should have kept my little purple shed just to put there so I could just go and sit in there and make a cup of tea and things because <laughs> I do miss having a shed to sort of escape to um, but my dad wants to build one um, he's quite intent on building a potting shed because we want it quite tall and we want the eaves to be quite tall so we can you know hang onions and dried flowers and things from there um, so we're thinking it might just be better to build one ourselves so again I don't know when we're going to get the time to do that hopefully in the autumn or winter like I said we've got a little bit more time um, so yeah that's the, that's the plan for this area it would probably just be easier to show you a picture um, if you didn't catch my plans in the last video um, but also what I'm thinking with the two raised beds that are going to go in front of the greenhouse um was going to have two wigwams like a wigwam in each one with sweet peas up and then maybe some strawberries or just have strawberries in the raised beds and then have an archway because that would be quite nice actually if you have the two raised beds you know symmetrical to the greenhouse and then you have the archway in line with the doorway yes that sounds better i like that idea better um but yeah this is just a dream at the moment it's just a dream we don't have the greenhouse but we do very nearly have a polytunnel so this is what i call the polytunnel area even though there's a fruit cage well not a fruit cage but a fruit area as well um, in this bit but this is a sort of like extension to the vegetable patch um, but as you can see we are getting on really really nicely with this bit now <laughs> We took the turfs off of the polytunnel area and we actually hired a turf cutter um, mainly for the orchard well you'll see in a minute it's a bit of a mess <laughs> but it cut the turf here really nicely because obviously it's nice and flat um, so yeah we took all the turf off my dad's rotivated it um, he's put the anchors in I think there's seven anchors down each side um, and yeah all we need to do really is put the polytunnel up so we got the polytunnel from first tunnels it's 14 foot by 30 foot uh, so it's quite a nice size um, yeah all we need to do basically is put the put the frames up and then put the sheet over I say all we need to do I mean that's quite a big job <laughs> um, I'm not I'm actually not looking forward to putting the sheeting over just because I know <laughs> it's gonna be such a faff um, but it's really really exciting really exciting so we've got like a meter wide path going all the way up the middle um, and then we've also kept this area flat because we're going to have like a little bit of a trestle table here with maybe a chair um, just in case we need to do a little bit of potting on obviously we'll have the greenhouse at some point to do the majority of the sewing and the potting on in but we just thought it would be handy to have a little table here to do little bits and bobs um, 
but yeah there's going to be a door at the end as well which we probably won't use i mean we don't really need it in there but but yeah pretty pretty exciting um and with the fruit cage as well i mean we've got it all planted i think that was one of the first things we've done uh we've got four black currant bushes so there's ben alder and ben lomond two of each um, and then we've got two gooseberries which are hinomaki green and then there's two rows of raspberry canes there there's 10 in each row they are autumn bliss um, i grew them on the old allotment and they just grew really well they're so easy to prune i just prefer them to summer fruiting ones um, and again took the turf off of that need to tidy up the edges a little bit um, and also get rid of the turf um, and then what we might do is we'll probably put some weed suppressant down maybe some bark and then hopefully one day <laughs> when we get a bit more spare time uh, build a sort of walking cage to go in there as well um, but yeah they're all growing really nicely they're starting to green up and show a few buds so really really exciting once the polytunnel's up here this area will be pretty much complete apart from building the fruit cage so yeah very very exciting and it would be nice to have somewhere to put seeds and to put seedlings in um because at the moment we're just using the the spare caravan to sort of grow things in so it's not ideal so yeah the sooner we get the polytunnel up the better but yeah let's go on to the orchard which is the last area to show you and welcome to our little orchard I did tell you it was a bit of a mess um yeah but hopefully hopefully soon it's going to be full of wildflowers and full of wildlife um that's the idea anyway so yeah we took well we tried to take most of the turf off with the turf cutter that we hired it was it was so much hard work I don't think I anticipated how hard it would be I just thought it would be you know pottering along behind this turf cutter um, but because the ground you know isn't level it's so humpy bumpy like you really had to push down on it and God, my shoulders absolutely ached for days afterwards um, so yeah it's a little bit patchy um, and we still got to tidy up a few little areas but what we're going to do is maybe use the rotavator to sort of tickle the surface I don't think we're going to try and level it off just because it's so lumpy bumpy um, but then yeah we've got some wildflower seed which we're going to sow um, it's actually 80% grass um, and then 20% wildflowers so it's going to have a nice traditional orchard look to it which I just love um, like I've always dreamt of having like a little orchard so yeah it's going to be nice I go on Pinterest quite a lot like for the past few years I've just been pinning and like liking loads of pictures of traditional orchards with all the long grass and things so that's the plan here anyway and then what we'll do is because this is the entrance here we're going to have a nice old wooden gate here we've got the hedging all the way along so that will back down uh, past the greenhouse nice wooden gate here and then hopefully yeah a nice meadow with a um pathway sort of mown into it a little bit wiggly like going down the center down to the chickens which will be at the far end there i don't know if you can just see the coop um but anyway in the orchard there are three trees that were here already and then we have planted five more so there's eight trees in total this tree here this huge one we don't know what variety that is it's delicious but we just don't know the variety it's actually too big and we have pruned quite a lot of it already but we're just going to leave it at that for this year because it's obviously best not to over prune um then next door to that is a cherry uh, not a cherry plum it's just a plum which we think is victoria and then down the far end there is a bramley apple um which yeah i love bramley apples i love cooking apples um yeah i just love crumbles and apple pies mm. um and then we planted <laughs> i'm not sure i remember them all i think this one's discovery yes we've got a discovery a concord pear Ellison's orange and a cider apple Ellis bitter 
we had to have a cider apple obviously because we made cider last year and it's delicious um, and then there's one more apple here called katie seems a little bit vain having a having an apple tree with the same name as you but <laughs> i couldn't resist it i mean then they're, they're delicious anyway um so yeah eight trees all together and then we also have the edible hedging round the whole edge actually um up along past the back of the polytunnel as well just to create this sort of boundary against the field which has sheep in um i mean they're nice to look at and everything um, and because there's lambs there at the moment it is really nice but it'll be nice to have a little bit of privacy there um and an edible hedge you can't go wrong <laughs> so all the way along round the orchard and then round the bottom bit as well it's all edible so there's elderflower crab apple slow berry hawthorn um and a lot of dog rose as well i think there's a couple of other ones i can't quite remember but i'll pop a little list up i think there's about 30 elderflowers in there <laughs> you can never have enough elderflower um so yeah that will be really nice and it's all starting to bud now it's all starting to green up um, and it's looking really really healthy so obviously it'll be nice for us because it's all edible we can make things from it but there's also going to be more than enough just to leave for the wildlife um, and just create a nice wildlife edible hedge uh, so yeah um, oh no I haven't mentioned the chicken yet we haven't got chickens yet <laughs> I was going to get chickens but um, I'm gonna leave it now until maybe August time because we're doing all the garden shows now, I didn't think it would be fair to get chickens when we weren't here. I mean, obviously my mum's gonna be here looking after the dogs, but we're going to need to do a little bit of training with the dogs, especially with Ted, just to get him used to the chickens, sort of desensitize him to the chickens. Um, I didn't think it would be fair to put all of that responsibility on my mum when she's here by herself. So yeah, I'm gonna wait off now until August when the shows end and I've got, you know, all the time <laughs> well until next year when the shows start again um but yeah i've got i mean a lot of time to focus on the chickens then and settle them in and get ted used to them um so yeah got the coop i've got a run um which i'll probably still put up even though they're allowed out now i still put the run up we're also going to get some electric fencing as well just because we aren't too sure about foxes and things around here and then i just need to get a few other little bits as well like a feeder um and the food <laughs> and everything and the chickens um but yeah so around august time i think i'm going to get the chickens because our last year our last show is end of july tatton so yeah august the chickens will come um and also i mean i nearly forgot about them we've got two beehives which we got um second hand when we were back in southampton they're gonna go sort of halfway up the orchard here. Um, we're also gonna have like a little bench and stuff here so we can have like nice little summer picnics in the orchard. But anyway, we've got two beehives which will go there. Um, I'm gonna go on a course first before we delve into the world of beekeeping. I know a few people in the village actually that keep bees as well, so that'd be really, really handy. And I think I'm gonna join, um, a, you know, an organization as well, an association. Um, so yeah. I think that's about it for the orchard. Tis a mess at the moment, but hopefully it will look nice very, very soon. So that's that. I think I've just about covered everything. Um, I do just want to mention this little area that we've created here, actually. <laughs> so we put like a little kink in this fence line here and this hedge line uh, just so we can slot a bench into it um, so it's still sort of in line here but yeah it's just a nice place to sit and to look at what you've done <laughs> it's just really nice and I mean I know there's not a lot to look at at the moment but I know that as the years go on this bench is just going to be one of my favorite places to sit and I just love that we sort of put it back into the hedge line a little bit and create this little you know quirky bits of the garden 
The other side of this is the herbaceous border which we recently dug. It's about 15 meters long by about two meters deep <laughs> so it's going to take a lot of flowers to fill. We have bought a few of our favorites um, and I think we're just going to add to it over time. I mean it's going to cost a fortune if we just fill it with flowers as it is now. So I think it's going to be you know taking a lot of cuttings and dividing a few things um, but we have got about six or seven roses in there and I there are well there is room for a couple more but the idea is that we're going to visit the David Austin garden because it's only about an hour away from us now so we'll hopefully visit that in June when all the roses are out and maybe bring one or two home with us um but yeah it's it's nice to see it finally starting to take shape and to actually look like a vegetable garden there's obviously still lots to do I mean we need to put the gates in there's going to be a little gateway up there and then the main gateway is going to be there um, with a big wooden gate um, and obviously the gateway into the orchard as well we've also prepared another bed there which is going to be another flower bed I don't know if you can see it in the background there um, which we haven't dug yet <laughs> but I mean we've got a lot on our plate with this vegetable uh, this flower patch here um, so that can just wait for a little bit but we just marked it out and took the turf off as well when we had the turf cutter um but yeah i i think i've covered everything um i will try and do another tour maybe in maybe in june when we've got a little bit of spare time hopefully things will start to look a bit more fuller then <laughs> um and i will try and do some more videos like i said time's just i mean it's slipping away <laughs> I, I can't believe it's nearly May already um, and yeah life just gets busy doesn't it so I do try and film things as I go along I've actually filmed putting the asparagus in I'll probably film putting a few flowers and putting the gladioli in the flower patch as well so yeah I think that's about it I think I waffled on for a little bit too long again <laughs> but I really really hope you enjoyed that video and I'll see you all in the next one